Planning your website sitemap should be the first step of any website creation project because it can simply make it or break it. So if you want to make any website creation project a success, don't skip any part of this video. And I will also share with you a tool that you can use for free to plan your website sitemap in a visual way. So make sure you watch until the end. Hello, I'm Kay from Brainstorm Force, and today we'll look at a simple yet powerful way to kickstart your website creation project and give you a chance to actually complete it even if it's your first website. But first, why is it important to plan your sitemap before you start building your website? Building a website is a little bit like building a house. Except that if you're building this website on your own, you'd be at the same time the architect and the builder. Now if you had to build an actual house, you wouldn't dive right in the building phase, right? Right? Actually you could, but without proper planning you'd probably run into some serious issues. Well, a website is the same. Sure, you can dive right in, but if you want to make your website creation project a success, a little planning can make all the difference in the world. Plus the process is fun and will actually help you complete your website project. Because it's true, many people start building their website and then they get stuck and they get discouraged along the way. Well, after watching this video, that won't be the case for you because you will know exactly how to tackle any website creation project with simple yet powerful steps. So trust the process and know that the planning phase will help you eliminate future potential issues. Next, asking the right questions. Well, first of all, you should gather all the stakeholders of the project. Now, if you're building this website on your own for yourself, then I guess everybody's already there. Well, I hope, but I digress. Now, if other people are involved in the project, make sure you set up a meeting ahead of time. Next, when the meeting comes, it's time to start brainstorming and you can make it as complex or as simple as possible. But personally, I like to keep things simple. So I would ask questions like, which content is labeled absolutely crucial on the future website? So this is the content you must have on day one. Next, which content is labeled nice to have? In other words, that content is not gonna be there on day one. It can come in a later phase. And three, which actions would you like the website visitors to perform? Now, of course, we could ask more questions, but let's keep it simple here because you don't want to get stuck in analysis paralysis. What you want is to complete this website project. And these apparently simple questions will help you start defining the content and structure of the future website. So make sure you write all the questions and answers because you will need it later in the process. Now, for the sake of this video, let's imagine that you have a security company and you want to create your company's website. Here will be the answer to the questions of the brainstorming session. So which content is labeled absolutely crucial on the future website? That would be of course the homepage, info about the company, so it could be our certifications, our facilities, about us, all these type of things, all services, and there are a bunch of services, testimonials of clients, and contact information, of course. Next, which content is labeled nice to have? And that would be blog posts about the company. Maybe as an owner, you want to release blog posts about you know, what the company is doing, but that can come at a later stage because it's going to require you to actually write this content or have this content written, and it doesn't need to be there from day one. Next, news about the security industry. Could be nice, but once again, is it really crucial on day one? No. Question number three, which actions would you like the website visitors to perform? And that's easy, book a free consultation. Because more than likely people are not gonna buy right away. And you're already offering a free consultation because that's where you close the deals. So basically the only thing you want because you don't wanna confuse your website visitors is to have that one action that you want them to perform. And that's pretty easy, book a free consultation. Next, taking a look at your competition. Okay, there are about 10 spots on the first page of Google and everybody knows that almost nobody goes to the second page. So with our security company example in mind, I looked for security company in Albuquerque, New Mexico, because why not? And if these companies are on the first page of Google, they must be doing something right, right? Now, it doesn't mean that they do everything right. So it's good to actually gather intel trying to find out what they do well and maybe what they don't do that well. And so maybe you can get ahead with time if you do things better. So really what you wanna do is open those 10 websites and look at the way they organize information and also what are your first impressions? 
Do you feel overwhelmed or is it easy to find information? Write all that down and then outline the pros and the cons and use this intel to start shaping your content and structure. So in our security company example, let's take a look at some of these websites. So the first one here, the structure of the navigation is pretty simple. So basically they offer training, security and investigations. The next one, okay, this one has more content. They got services and here you can see you got some drop downs and some other drop downs, uh, lots of services, but it seems like it's neatly organized. You got their expertise with scheduled consultations, service areas about us uh, with more content or oh, a lot of content here, actually um, a bit overwhelming and careers. Okay. Next we have this one. Okay. Just request a quote. Oh no, here at the top, you know, I hadn't seen this one uh, at the very top you have another menu. Okay. Next we have this one. Uh, they have services and here it's neatly organized investigations, protection, risk consultation, and workplace violence. At least, you know, it's way easier to identify the services Then training, apply resources and contact. Okay. Next here we have security solutions, cash services, campus, careers, locations. Am I, is it really a security company? Oh, looks like it. Okay. Next we have our training services, careers and contact. Okay. So at this stage, some of the elements are present on several websites. So we can write that down, use all of that Intel to shape up your own content. Next tools you can use to plan your sitemap. Planning a sitemap gets easier when you can actually visualize the sitemap because at this stage, the sitemap is just in your head. And if your head is organized like mine, you can get pretty busy up there. So first you could use the good old pen and paper and it's not bad to get started. Or you could use a tablet and e-pen if you're more on the digital side. Or you could use software like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer, or even the free tool, the GIMP. But today I'm going to show you an even better tool for the job. And it's this tool right here. So when you land on the page, click on create sitemap and by default, it gives you this layout. So as you can see here, you got the main page. Let me zoom. So we get the main page and then within the page, you can add some blocks. So let's say I can change the block here, call it testimonials. And then I can add a new block called um, call to action. For example, you get the idea and then I can easily remove blocks. So that's for the blocks within one page, but we're not going to take care about this today. We just want to lay out the sitemap structure. So very easy. So here, for example, I have my about page. I can add one more page. I click on the plus sign. So this will be the first level. And then let's say I have services in here. I can add a second level. So I would have service one and then add more service to you get the idea now at this stage, this is just an unsaved project. And if you click on save, it's going to prompt you to get a premium account. But if all you want to do is to have a visual representation of your sitemap, you can just make a screenshot and use it as a visual reference. And by the way, you can use this tool or any other tool. It happened to be one of the first tools that I found when I typed visual sitemap generator. But if you go into Google, you find plenty of tools. So just pick the one that you prefer. But I found this one pretty easy to use. Next, building our visual sitemap. So following up on our private security company example, there are a few stages to tackle. Okay. Stage one is to lay out all of the pages that were decided during the brainstorming session. And as you can see here on screen, there are many, 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 many pages. Now, in order to make our private security company example come alive, I've used the WordPress Astra theme as well as our starter template plugin to create a website in just a few clicks. So I've picked this design. And if you'd like to know how to create your own website with the Astra theme and the starter templates plugin, I've put a link to a tutorial in the description below. So if we go back to our visual sitemap, we can see that it's pretty messy. And if we take a look at the demo, it's even messier. Look at this. It's overwhelming and I don't know about you, but I don't know where to look for information. 
too many items in the navigation. It just makes me want to close this browser tab. So with that in mind, let's move on to a second stage of refining our sitemap and navigation. And in this second stage, we now have two levels. So the first level we have about us, our process, our experience, our certifications, our facilities, basically all the pages except the services. Because now the services come to a second level just below the service page. And if we take a look at how it translates in the demo, it's much better. So this is our navigation now. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine elements. And then all the services right here under the service page. And if we compare it to the previous stage, it's much better. Much better, but we're still not there yet. And for a good reason. And that reason is Miller's Law. The magical number seven plus or minus two are how to grab attention, also known as Miller's Law. So the magical number seven experiment purports that the number of objects an average human can hold in working memory is seven plus or minus two. What this means is that the human memory can typically include strings of words or concepts ranging from five to nine. This information on the limits to the capacity for processing information became one of the most highly cited papers in psychology. So in other words, the average person can only keep seven plus or minus two items in their working memory. And here is a visual way to represent it. If you look at all the keywords here for just a few seconds and then you're being asked, okay, what did you remember? Well, information is stored temporarily in the prefrontal cortex. Don't ask me what it is, just Google it. For 10 to 15 seconds, the number of bits one can hold in their working memory is five to nine items. This is a universal law and limitation observed in many studies. So in other words, don't have more than five to nine elements at any level. But it's not because you could potentially have seven or nine elements that you need to. Because when it comes to website navigation, less is definitely more. So with this new scientific knowledge in mind, let's move on to stage number three, where we're gonna keep on refining our sitemap and navigation. Okay, and this time we still have our homepage here. And then we have a first level with about, services, testimonials, contacts, and then we have our free consultation call to action. And then we have second and third levels. So we have a second level for the about page where you can put all this information under about. And then for services, we have a second level with monitoring armed security, investigations and training. And then we have a third level when it comes to monitoring and armed security. And if we now take a look at our website demo, it's way better. In the first level, we just have five elements, home, about services, testimonials, and contact. And actually there's a sixth element, which is our free consultation call to action, but that we also had in the previous stages. So we went from this to this and now to this. And if we take a look a little bit closer, even in the sub levels, there is never more than seven elements. We got five elements here. Then we go to services, we got four elements. And then in each element here, monitoring, we got three elements, armed security, three elements. So we're all set. Miller would be so proud of us. Look at this. It's way cleaner than what we had initially with this awful navigation. Plus, now it's easy for our customers to find the information in a fast and efficient way. Next, I'd quickly like to share three mistakes to avoid when building your sitemap and navigation. And the first mistake is to only use Miller's Law for the main navigation because yes, we have the same menu here, but if you look on top, I added a secondary menu. And then if we go on the left hand side here, I got some social icons. And then on the right hand side, I have another call to action with a phone number that could be turned into a button. And I have another call to action here with free consultation. So of course, technically, even if the navigation only has a maximum of five elements here and in the sub levels is the same. Well, for the rest, we still have the secondary navigation. So three more items, one more here and all the social icons. So many more icons, which means more clutter. 
Now the next mistake is trying to pack as much information as possible. And it's a bad idea because it's a known fact that people usually scan on a website and it's only once you're credible enough and they've nailed down the short list and they want to stay on your website then at this moment they're going to start reading. But even then reading on a screen may not be as easy as reading on paper, at least for some people. So the name of the game is to be credible first and make sure that the people actually stay on your website so they need to find the information quickly when they scan the pages. And once they stay on your website you can get them to perform an action that you've predefined. So stay focused and don't try to recreate Wikipedia on your website because that may take a while. Mistake number three and I've seen that a lot Mistake number three is to have mixed content. So for example, I remember this guy that had a construction company, but at the same time he wanted to make the promotion of his other business, car wax. And also because he liked poetry and was good at it, he wanted to have a poetry blog on the same website. Now while all three types of content can work, you don't want to have those content on the same website. It's better to have one website for each. Otherwise you're just going to confuse your visitors and you're going to confuse Google. And trust me, you don't want to do that. So by using the tips outlined in this video, you can now start confidently building your website project. You now know the right questions to ask to start creating the structure and organize the content. And you can create a visual sitemap with the tool I mentioned and make a screenshot to use it as a reference. Now if you want to save time, instead of designing websites from scratch, you can use beautiful pre-made designs made by our team of experts and that already use great sitemaps so that you don't have to do it for your business. So if you're interested, make sure you check out our starter templates lineup. And if you'd like to know how to build a beautiful demo website, just like I've built with the WordPress Astra theme and the starter templates plugin. And if you'd like to know how to completely customize your website's navigation by using Astra's powerful header builder, then make sure you watch our tutorial tutorial video linked in the description below. We can't wait to see what you're going to build with this new knowledge and if there's anything that could help you understand building websites or completing website projects, please let us know in the comments.